Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the VIB News Attack, a 15-minute look at all the news that's not fit to print. Why? Because I'm Mark Garman, and you're not. A joint presentation of OzCat Radio 89.5 FM Vallejo and the Vallejo Independent Bulletin at ibvallejo.com. Brought to you from the beautiful townhouse lounge in exciting downtown Vallejo. This morning we're looking at the good, the bad, and mostly the ugly with environmental activist Doug Darling, founder of Friends of Lake Chabot. Well, Doug, we took a, a little boat ride this past Sunday out across Lake Chabot to look at the, the backside of Discovery Kingdom, Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. And it's a pretty ugly scene there. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of some of the debris uh, that is unfortunately landing in Lake Chabot and polluting our, our park? Will do, Mark. First off, I want to say thanks for having me. Thanks to Townhouse for having me. And I'm going to love the hell out of this. Beats the, beats the hell out of three minutes at the dais. But, uh, so, back to Lake Chabot. Um, yeah, and thank you for saying environmental activist and not advocate. Because if it's one thing Vallejo has taught me, that advocacy doesn't get it done. You've got to be an activist. Right. So my story with Chabot, while it goes back seven years, it goes back through four presidents. It's been... Honestly and frankly, it's been lip service all the way. Mm -hmm. So it's about environmental. It's about how they treat the lake. You know, they used to do the water ski show there, and they had a lot of equipment back there. And through the years, they let that equipment sit there, and storms would come and blow debris across the lake and down the creek. And for seven years, I've tried to point it out to them. I've asked them to clean it up. I've even tried to clean it up myself, and the city wouldn't let me. Long story short, seven years, four presidents later, here we are. Presidents of the park, not the Presidents country. of the theme park, that's right. <laughs> Presidents of Six Flags Discovery Theme Park. Well, let, let me just frame it a little bit. I mean, I, I was, uh, I, I've gone out with you before to look at some of the mess that Discovery Kingdom is making. Um, it, it, let's remember, Lake Chabot is, is part of Dan Foley Park. And people go there to recreate. They go there to fish, to enjoy the water, to enjoy the nature. And w what I've seen with you is, is really horrible. It's appalling. Uh, we're talking about plywood, pressure-treated wood, painted plywood, decaying, rusting metal structures, electrical conduit, uh, foam that is breaking down and ending up in the lake, ending up in the, the creek and the streams. And when you look at uh, a company like uh, Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, who touts their environmental consciousness, it seems to really just be a facade because on the front side of the park, it's all bright and shiny. On the back side of the Discovery Kingdom Park, which is facing on our public park, Dan it's Foley our, Park. It's our front yard, absolutely. Right. It's, it's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess of, of decay. It's, it's a mess of environmental hazard. Uh, I mean, outdoor carpet does not belong in the stream. In the creek, that's correct. Yeah, yeah they're not a company, they're a corporate. They're a giant Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. Uh, you know, I, I feel like a gnat on a corporate ass, you know, but even a gnat can bite, you right. know, and, and that's what I've got to do. Um, they've got such a mess out there, and we've done this before, Mark. Well, we got a promise from them that they were going to clean it up. Uh, we went out there and shot some video before, and uh, Channel 11 also did a feature story on the pollution and uh, the, the irresponsible behavior, really. Oh. That's right. We, we've done this before. We've right. been there. And, and, they and said, nothing has happened. They said they'd take care of it, just like the prior president said. Right. And it hasn't happened. So call it what you want. Call it ignorance. I'm not sure what you want to call it. All I know is that the only way that I'm going to get any results, and I say me because, you know, I live here. It's my lake. It's your lake, too. It's our lake. It's public property. The only way anything gets done is if they can be shamed publicly. I mean, I, I shouldn't have to create videos and portraying the, the negligence and the environmental injustice they bring. Right. The pictures will speak for themselves when you see the video. You know, it's, there, there's no standard of measure. It's not how much trash it is. It's not what color it is. I mean, when you see the pictures, they speak for themselves. We all can recognize that right is right and wrong is wrong. Absolutely. I mean, when you look at uh, uh, Discovery Kingdom, I mean, it is, it is kind of a visual, one of the visual showpieces, I guess, for Vallejo. I mean, it's something people identify with, the roller coasters and all that. 
and in, in, in a lot of ways it's positive because it brings people I into town and um, it generates revenue, it does provide some jobs, granted not extremely high paying jobs, but some jobs. Um, it, it generates a lot of money for Six Flags, they're a very profitable company, a multi-million dollar company. So for me, I'm having, I have a hard time wrapping my head around, you know, why they're behaving the way they are. In other words, they, they, they've been chastised about this, they've been exposed, they've gotten bad press. Um, the only thing that I can really chalk it up to is, is complete and, and total arrogance and greed at the expense of the citizens of Vallejo. You're right, there's no excuse for it. You know, if you, if you look at the back, it's, it's a shambles. The fence is falling apart, pieces are hanging out everywhere, falling in the water. It looks like squatters live there. They've made record millions over the last two years. It's not that they can't afford to do it. It's not that they don't have the time. It's not that they don't have the staff. I don't know what the answer is. It, it's, it's, it's sad. It's disgusting. It's shameful. It's wrong. Yeah. I don't have the answer. I wish I did. Right. And, and we're on radio, so obviously, um, you know, the, the, the viewers are left in a sense who are listening to this on OzCat to visualize. But I, I personally paddle out there with you and uh, shot some of the video, which will be up on, on the website. It will be at ibvaleo.com uh, in the next day or so, which uh, we took pictures both above and below the water. We brought some waterproof equipment. And we're talking about large sunken docks made of plywood, foam, uh, plastic, paint that's peeling off. I, I just, you know, I'm trying to put in words uh, over the airwaves as best I can, how absolutely appalling it is. You have got on one side Dan Foley Park, which GVRD, the Greater Vallejo Recreation District, has done a fantastic job with the sports field, and the lake is stocked with fish for people to fish. People go there and catch trout. You go across the lake to Discovery Kingdom, and it's, it's a junkyard. It's just, it's just a junkyard. It is, it is appalling. Uh, it's, it's disgusting. Uh, you know, we looked at a big structure there that was uh, from uh, back in the days when they did the, the water skiing. 2004. Right, which has been there, and it's decaying now. We're talking about sheets of plywood with peeling paint that are, are, are breaking off and dropping into the water. Talking about walls that have fallen down, they're laying in the water, all the wiring, the cable. It's, uh, like I said, words don't explain it. Yeah, the I mean, pictures let, will. Right. I just, all I can say is that it, it Discovery Kingdom is, is, is really taking a crap on Vallejo. They really are. And I, I just can't use strong enough terms and, um, you know, in, in describing it. Uh, now, now, tell me a little bit more, Doug, about uh, the kind of promises that were made to you as far as, you know, your interaction with some of the, the president, uh, um, Don McCoy. And not just the presidents, he's, but the, the... And he's the park president now. He's the current guy. Correct. My dealings with the corporate headquarters. Not only have the park presidents brushed me on the rug, corporate headquarters, New York City, Six Flags have brushed me under the rug mm -hmm. for 18 months. Um, my dealings with the presidents go back seven years ago, but the last three presidents I've taken by the hand down to the creek and showed them right. what was there. And they and all said the same thing. Doug, that's our stuff, and we'll take care of it. Yeah, and I've done the walk with you as well. Uh, as well as the paddle, and uh, yeah, it's 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 not like a few little bits and pieces. I mean, we're talking about big chunks of, of foam um, that's that's breaking up and decaying along with paint that's floating down the creek. The debris that made the, down the creek several years past and that's been down there for four or five years that has recently been removed, but it wasn't removed by Discovery Kingdom, are as large as 10 by 18 feet. Um, and it's, interestingly enough, as we were out there Sunday filming that video, as you know, we put a call into Don McCoy, the current park president of Discovery Kingdom. He did call back today, and, and more than calling back, he actually asked if we could meet at the lake. 4.30, in the rain, we did. We walked the lake, we walked down to the creek, and as I told him, that, that and uh, he, he gets it, there are no words that he can tell me right now. And what was his excuse? It's ridiculous because no he's, words that, he's that the guy can, we, you dealt with before and, and had a conversation with about this and showed it to him. And, uh, you know, the video was put up and Channel 11 did, did four minutes as a lead story on this. It's, it's that appalling. Um, Jody Hernandez at Channel 11 took a look at it and she came running over because it's, 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 it's nasty on an environmental level and it's, it's visually very apparent. And, and, so, so, I mean, what was his... 
It's degrading. Excuse? Uh, it doesn't matter what his words were because the words mean nothing. The only thing that will speak right now are actions, and that's what I had to tell him. I said, I don't care what you say. Words mean nothing. It's been lip service for four years, quite honestly. Only actions will speak for themselves. It's now it's up to him. So my job right now is to make it public what's going on out there. Right. So he's going to have to do some damage control. If, tell us, I mean, what, what message would you give to uh, the park management right now as far as what you want to see happen? Pay attention to what's going on. Come out back, get in the boat, look at your backyard, pick up the mess, work with me. Right, you right. Know? And we tried that in the past. You know that. Yeah, yeah. And it, again, it was it's broken promises. Yeah. You know, they, they put a, a broadcast out on Channel 4 News, and it said, we're working to remediate the problem. As far as I can that tell. That was eight months ago, yeah. and it's still there. Basically, nothing has happened. And I was, when we uh, went over there um, and looked at some of the stuff in the water that is sunken, um, you know, we're talking about plywood, uh, uh, framing that looks like pressure-treated lumber that's uh, uh, sunken Every under the water that's decaying, uh, steel structures. All sorts of stuff that doesn't belong there. Right. It's not really a matter of what it is, it doesn't belong. It's simple. You see it, it's wrong. It's just wrong. There's no excuse. There really is no words for it. It's wrong. Why they get away with this, I don't know. They don't care. No words. I'm sorry. They just don't care. Right. Well, what would you like people to do, Doug? What would you like to see uh, the I'd citizens I'd like to see people do? let Discovery Kingdom know that we're not going to renew our season passes until you guys clean up your act. Right. And still you, until you start treating this property with the respect that it's entitled to. This is a huge corporation that makes that has made record millions over the last several years. It, and they and they really degrade it would this really be, property. It would really be pocket change for them to, to clean up the mess that that's oh, it's you know, pennies. It's pennies. Yeah. Really. Le leaching and, into and, our, our lake. And and somebody who doesn't renew their season tickets, that's not really gonna hurt them that much. What's gonna hurt them is the public, you know, talking about it. I right. don't it, it maybe we need to do a protest out there. Well it, it needs to be talked about publicly. Uh, the picture has to be painted. Right. That's the only way that anything is going to get done. If these folks aren't brought to the public, the public image, the public eye, they're not going to do anything. Well, lakes and waterways, that's really something you've devoted a lot of your life to, Doug. Well, Protecting. absolutely. We, this lake serves our community. We do the kids' fishing programs out there. We've been doing it for... Uh, GBRD has been doing the youth fishing derby out there for 14 years now. We do the inner city fishing the last seven years. We do youth environmental education out there. We take high school students and college students down to Chabot Creek, and we do biomonitoring in our creeks. We do physical assessments, chemical assessments, and, and biological assessments. Right. So it's recreation. It's education. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the facilities that people can use uh, that's public. It's a priceless asset to this community. You know how hard it is? You couldn't build this lake if you wanted to. Right, right. We got one. Well, I'll tell you what I'd like to see happen. Now, I'm, I'm going to urge all the listeners uh, to boycott Discovery Kingdom until this is fixed. Uh, it's appalling. It's disgusting. It's uncalled for. Um, it, it really is a corporation taking uh, a giant crap Absolutely. on us. Taking I mean, I'm going gonna, gonna to call it what it is. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to urge people to boycott, to not get season tickets, to not go until this is cleaned up. And we will be following this, and we will report... Um, you know, if they do what they're supposed to. And if they do, fine. But until that happens, I'm going to urge people, don't go there. Because they're not treating the community the way they should. And uh, I'm also, I also would like to have people call Don McCoy and let them know. I think that people should call. Do you have his number handy, Don? Hey, grab your pen and paper. Anybody out there who's willing to uh, reach out and uh, touch Don McCoy, the park president of Discovery Kingdom, and let him know how you feel about this, give him a call at 707-556-5202. Again, that's Don McCoy. Give him a call. Let him know what you think. Well, I think that's, uh, that's about all the time we have in our, uh, in our broadcast. I'd like to just also mention that the views expressed uh, in this broadcast are not necessarily those of OzCat Radio and only reflect the views of myself and Doug Darling, who are here speaking about this. Absolutely, and if anybody wants to Google Discovery Kingdom litter debris, you'll find the uh, story from NBC Bay Area. And at the bottom of that NBC Bay Area page, you'll see the YouTube video. Doug, thanks a lot. Thanks for all the things you do for the community and to Discovery Kingdom. 
clean up your act. Absolutely. Thanks, Mark. And remember, everybody, boycott Discovery Kingdom.